Oh, that's super loud. All right, all of this is in flux right now because nothing was working this morning. So bear with me while I check this all out and make sure it's working correctly. Most importantly, the fish cam is working. Okay. So we're giving a weekday mod stream a try to see if, see if anyone actually tunes in uh, because I just haven't had time on weekends so um, between dance class and lens events and whatnot uh, Saturdays just are difficult. <laughs> 
not my dance class, my children's dance class. All right. So we are going to be doing Why is this lagging so much? There we go. Um, we're going to be doing a couple of contacts primes today, which everyone loves. Um, bit of an oddball set. I assume this is filling out a larger set, but uh, I'm not a judge. I, uh, nice fish pond. It's, it's a aquarium. We should pick that would be good to put a pond outside. Uh, but then they would the lenses would definitely get destroyed much, much quicker being exposed to the uh, the elements. Um, yeah, you can't really the fish are so small right now, you can't even see them. Uh, there's a couple tiny ones right in the center. Actually here I could do a quick I think this will work here. No, not quite. <laughs> uh, there you go. That should be full now. So there's a couple that you could see there. Anyway. We'll get back to... I don't know if that even worked. That was weird. I think it worked. But uh, we'll jump in. So first one I'm working on today is an 18 millimeter. Happy New Year. Oh, same to you. This one's an oddball one. I've never been a huge fan. Um, the reason, the biggest reason is the, the front the whole front housing rotates with focus, which is not ideal. Overall, though, the lens is in great condition. Practically no wear marks on the mount. It's a little bit of scraping there. Don't know what caused that. Oh, I didn't update my, uh... What is this? This is a... 18mm F4. There we go. Now our current lens is up to date. Um, so, what is this lens getting? We're getting... Front ring focus gear, D click, and mount coverage, so full mod. You know what? I don't know. I don't know if I have my lights set correctly here. There we go. That's better. Just slightly brighter.
there's our our linkage is still connected there, as you can see. I think I need to overhaul my lighting setup. This is a uh, it's not as bright as it was last time I did a mod stream. But I think the exposure is still okay. from Sweden to get the ball rolling did you get a chance to put some new lenses on the projector uh, I'm not sure what you mean Philip new lenses I always put new lenses on the projector that's uh, every day <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely sure what you're referring to So that linkage can be tricky coming out of there because you have to fit the um, this little post here has to interface with this armature, and then that uh, tab has to fit through a very specific slot. Uh, where would you suggest somebody start if they would like to see if learning to rehouse their own lenses is feasible goal to pursue? I'm not sure what you mean by you mean like having someone else do it or doing it yourself? So this aperture movement actually feels really nice. Oh, we probably have our, our ball bearings stuck on there. doing it oneself. Um, for somebody that was interested in performing their own lens rehousing, you need a solid understanding of optomechanical design. Uh, I guess that would really depend on where you fall in that, that, you know, regard. If you have zero experience, um, I would recommend getting some experience and learning the basics of mechanical engineering uh, and then optomechanical design and how that mechanical um, design interfaces with the optics. So there's our ball bearing. Got stuck in the grease there. Uh, if you don't have a sort of bare bones basic understanding of how optics and mechanics work uh, with each other, then rehousing a lens is going to be very difficult. Hey, Mr. Blevins, welcome to a Friday morning. I'm 
This is the first time I'm doing the mod stream on a weekday and not on a Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, which also means it's the first time I'm doing it during business hours. So you will hear machines, you'll hear the phone will probably be ringing. Actually, I think I muted it. Yeah, this lens is in really, really good condition. Almost no signs of wear on the body or the internals. Everything looks nice and clean. Um, if it was serviced, it was serviced well. Um, there's no excessive grease. It wasn't particularly dry. So this is very nice to see. Yeah, so you didn't, all of this is nice and clean. The grease is clean, so to speak. I mean, obviously it's greasy and sticky, but that's the point. It's not, uh, it hasn't coagulated or dried up. So this lens has been taken care of. It's easy to see that. Did the music stop already or is it just quiet? No, it's going. Okay. All right. Uh, is it possible to treat thoriated yellowed lenses with consumer grade UV lights? Um, yes and no. It's possible. I've seen I've seen decent results, but it's not going to be night and day difference. I would also, I mean, depending on how severe it is, in some cases that yellowing is actually kind of beneficial. I mean, it kind of adds to the look of the lens, or I should say the, the look that the lens produces. Um, so obviously if it's too yellow and your entire image is very tobacco-y, uh, that's not helpful. But it can't hurt. It, it's, you know, we did a, a pretty, pretty thorough study of UV exposure when COVID first came about because everyone was trying to use uh, whatever means they could to, to kill the virus. And there was, a couple different companies that were exploring um, UV tools to protect their inventory, you know, allow people to touch lenses and hand off lenses and not be contaminated, so to speak. Um, so we did a pretty in-depth study of intense exposure to UV light, and it's not going to hurt the glass from our research, um, but there's other materials in a lens that it could, uh, I wouldn't say hurt, but hasten the aging. So if a lens has plastic components, um, it's not going to do any favors in that regard. Uh, or if it has any sort of uh, maybe some specific types of adhesives. But it's point is, try the UV light. You know, Try different wavelengths. Um, it's not going to hurt your lens. I will say though, a uh, quick note so that I don't get in trouble here, please be careful about specific spectrum UV lights because they can be harmful without proper protection. So don't go out and buy an industrial grade, super, super high wavelength UV bulb or light. Um, if you're doing that, you do need proper eye protection. Is it from Germany or Japan? This lens is from Japan. This particular one, this 18 millimeter. 
I'm gonna adjust my microphone here. I think it's it's farther away than it used to be. So sorry. Oh, there it is. Now it's in frame, but oh well. <laughs> All right, so that's nice and clean. We have our bearing out. Uh, give these some chemicals because they're coated in glue, thread locker. So you're going to hear sounds like that. And it's a little windy today. Um, any of you that have been following the mod stream for a while, you'll know on one of those nice quiet Saturdays when it gets really windy here in Chatsworth, our our drop ceiling creaks and rattles and makes all sorts of noises like a like an old sail ship, sailboat. So when you hear those like creaking sounds, it's because it's windy here. Like that. It's going right now. You just heard it. was asking about the rehousing. Oh, they don't have a name. Insert name <laughs> is their name. There seem to be several books on optomechanical design. Have you read any of them? Uh... Most of them, I guess, but I, there's always new ones that I'm not. I, I, people always seem to find new ones that I have not read. So, uh, I would start with. In, mm, it depends, because a lot of the books that I recommend are going to be on a lot of theory, a lot of physics, which are not necessarily going to give you the basics of rehousing, or you know optomechanical design. Um, what kind of lens are you looking to rehouse? How did the Lens Tech training seminars go? I saw a good amount of people. Oh, they went fantastic, actually. Um, we had oh, almost 40 technicians, I think, uh, over the course of two weeks. So we had, 
we had level one technicians Monday and Tuesday the first week, then level two technicians Thursday, Friday, and then the next week was the same thing again. So level one, then level two. And it went very, very well. I just realized I think my notifications are still on. There we go. Um, more to come. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So even with the level one and level two, week one and week two, we still had probably maybe 30 more people that weren't able to sign up because the registration filled up immediately. So we will definitely do it again. All right, let's see if this feels good. It's hard to gauge the feeling because there's nothing to hold the lens by. All of this, you know, from the scale to the grip to the front housing, that's all the focus movement. So the whole thing turns. You have to kind of jam a finger in between that, uh, in between the two scales on the witness ring. And then you can kind of get a feel for it. Uh, it feels good. Actually, you could hold the rear optics, I suppose, but. It's not a great way to do it, but yeah, that feels very good. I'm happy with that. Do you recoat and repolish like a vintage lenses and do you do the work? Yes, we do. Well, we do it the other way around. We polish, then we recoat. <laughs> but yes, uh, we do that frequently. Um, we do a good amount of like our lenses with the exception of the 19 millimeter. The 19, for some reason, uh, we just can't seem to get coatings to adhere to that, that glass. I don't know why, I don't know what is different about that particular lens, but yes, we do that very frequently for a wide variety of lenses. I'm not sure if it's a dumb question or not, but what are the signs you look for to make sure you have good CZ copies before spending the extra money to have this? them as anybody um that's a good question though I, it's not not dumb at all um yeah, there's a couple of things and if you watch some of the previous mod streams i go over it frequently the first thing i usually look at is the cosmetic condition of the the outside of the lens obviously uh, particularly the mount this one's not a great example because it looks fantastic but if i see that the mount is worn out then i know it's been on and off the camera over and over, which, you know, it's wear and tear, um, or brassing, depending on the lens. What did I just do? I just lost this clocking. There we go. Yeah, this one, all of the paint is flawless from the original, from the, uh, the factory. Um, there's no shiny spots. There's no excessive wear. Uh, that's a a pretty quick indicator of how the lens was used or cared for. Uh, and then obviously mechanical feel. You want to rotate the, the focus and the iris to make sure everything's consistent and clean and smooth. Um, I will go on and on. I've, I've kind of started to make some progress. People are starting to adopt my perspective, uh, which is great. 
but I don't bother looking at serial numbers. I don't care when it was produced. It really doesn't matter. What's more important is how well it was cared for. Uh, if you have a 20 to 30 year old lens, maybe two of them rolled off the assembly line within a day or two of each other. One of them went to a dentist that kept it in a case its entire life and now put it up for eBay, on eBay for sale. Uh, and then the other one was a, you know, a news photographer in the field and the lens was used every day and thrown in a bag and thrown around. Uh, just because they were produced within a couple days of each other doesn't mean they're going to be in the same condition now, 20 or 30 years later. So don't pay too much attention to serial numbers. And I've, like I said, I've finally started to make progress with that. People are, are, are uh, repeating that logic and it's spreading, which is great because the serial number really doesn't matter. It's nice if you have the luxury of finding lenses that are close in serial number, but I wouldn't pick one lens over another just because of that. Lots of people have talked about copy variation in vintage lenses, but it's hard to judge if optical quality is as good as it can be when your sample size is one. That's very true. There's going to be copy variation, and I'm not talking about you know, the factory changed something at some point. I'm talking about like, you know, one day to the next, someone just didn't tune a lens as well as they could have. Um, so there is always copy variation, even in brand new lenses. So you add, add 20, 30 years of wear and tear on top of copy variation, and the serial numbers really start to not matter. Yeah, see so this whole, this is the actual mating surface of the mount where it would have attached to the camera. Uh, and there's practically no, no signs of wear. Um, that looks like the original adhesive. Yeah, this is an excellent, uh, actually, yeah, uh, even the little plastic bit looks good. Very nice. Those Lin hunting streams helped me for sure. Yeah, oh, I should do that again, actually. I probably will schedule that for next week and we'll, we'll do some lens hunting. I have officially completed my Mamiya Secor C set, so I'm not hunting for any more Mamiyas. Um, I'm very happy with the condition of my set. They're all great lenses. Um, uh, I'm not going to be hunting Mamiya's anymore. Plus, people caught on. The prices started skyrocketing. So, uh, Mamiya's are difficult now. Do you fix separation double on Leica lenses? Um, we we do decement and recement doublets and triplets. I can't imagine it would be a worthwhile endeavor on a Leica still lens. The the costs and the labor involved in disassembling, decementing, re-cementing with proper alignment on a, a Leica still photo lens, like an R-series, it would probably exceed the value of the lens pretty quickly. Usually we do doublet and triplet fixes for vintage cine lenses like Koa Promenars or, uh, you know, it's the stuff that you can't get a replacement for. It's just not an option. So we certainly could do it on a Leica lens, but I, I don't think it would be worth it. More and more like the eight elements. I'm not sure what you mean. The eight elements. So if I do another lens hunting stream, I'll probably do it just for funsies. Um, 
maybe if I find something really cool, I'll buy something. But uh, everything has gone up in price across the board. It's kind of terrifying. Uh, I might might try to hunt for some some damaged like ours. Maybe I'll specifically look for something with some damage uh, that I know that I can fix. All right, so this goes. Oh, did I get my clocking off here? That's not helpful. So this is that tricky part I was referring to. This tab has to fit through that slot very carefully. It's not going to fit. Yeah. And all the while, it has to pair up with that linkage right there. Oh. More like the 8 element Sumicron F3.5. Oh, you're talking about the an old M lens, right? Pretty sure that's an M. In which case we probably wouldn't even bother. No offense. <laughs> but yeah, disassembly, decementing, re-cementing on an M lens is almost always going to be more expensive than just replacing the lens. We should have, well, it's wide open right now, but if I was stopped down and I hold the mount, we should have, I don't know if you can see that, you can kind of see it. We still, even though we're not using this linkage, it's never going to get put up back on a, a uh, you know, contacts system. Um, we don't want to destroy that linkage just for preservation. When starting to build a set of contact size MMJ lenses for video, which ones would you recommend? Hmm. That's difficult to say without knowing specifics, you know, if there's anything unique that you're going to be shooting. Um, my default answer is, you know, stick with the basics. Um, 
I'd probably, personally, I would skip this 18. I'd start with the 21 uh, and go up from there to the, maybe the 135, 180. Um, yeah, the 180 is a bit of a specialty lens, but I would go maybe up to the 85. Uh, and if you need something a little bit longer, go for it. I got a radioactive Leica 60 millimeter f2 coming in. What do you charge to record and repolish the? You mean recoat? I think you mean recoat. Um, the 60 millimeter f2. That also sounds like an M lens. Generally, we don't service Leica M lenses. They're usually just not worth it. Oh yeah, you, re you okay? Recoat and repolish the front element with CLA. Yeah, if that's the M model, then we wouldn't. We do full service on the R series. We do obviously all of the like a Cine series, the Summicron C, Summilux C, etc. Uh, but we try to avoid the M lenses. All right, I believe this is getting a mount conversion. Here's our screws, here's our mount. Perfect. Um, I believe I need to do the gear before Actually, that might fit over. There's our gear. Ooh, yeah. Actually, I should do the gear before I even put the iris back together entirely. Still waiting for a sub 10k full frame 24 to 70 ish Sydney lens to hit the market. Any recommendations or rumors? Um, I mean, that's doable. That's very doable. You just, you're not going to have good quality. <laughs> you're going to sacrifice image quality for that zoom range and that speed. Well, you didn't mention a speed, but I assume you want, you know, 2829. gonna fit in there. No, this is wrong. Whoever gave me this is wrong. This is supposed to be a uh, um, a set screw style. So I'll get that later. I have an Apicus converted cook varicinitol, which has an element somewhere in the optical path that has hairline fracture. Oof. Can you all replace it, or would you need to find a donor? You would need to find a donor. I. I highly doubt we have a spare element for a, what was the abacus? That was the 18, I oh know the 20 to 100, I think. I mean, we might, but it would, we'd have to pull it out of another lens that's a donor lens. Um, so yeah, you would probably want to find a donor lens. Unless it's not affecting your image quality. We've seen hairline fractures that just it's not a problem. <laughs> so uh, if you need to replace it, then yeah. Oh, okay. The Super 16 Abacus. I should have known. I was thinking of the uh, Techno, not the Abacus. Techno's were all at the front. Abacus was all at the rear, usually. All right. Gonna mute for a second here so you guys don't go deaf. If I can remember how to mute.
Okay. We're back. Perfect. My camera technician is looking for somebody that's very passionate join optic repairs. It has to be somebody that, oh. You're trying to find lens technicians during my live stream? <laughs> Any, if there's any lens technicians that are looking for work, then they should <laughs> they should come here first. Sorry, sorry, Frank. What is your friend's? Uh, so your friend's camera camera technicians is there a company or is it just a guy in a shop oh thank you <laughs> did you see it yeah thank you yeah sorry no worries he brought me the the correct ring there does it for private collectors. I mean, don't we all? <laughs> Sigma has their 24 to 35 FF Cine Zoom. I'm hoping they'll build on that lineup. They probably won't. Uh, the, the 24 to 35 was a repurposing of their still photo lens, the 24 to 35 F 1.8, I think. Um, I think that Sigma had hoped that the 24 to 35 would be to full frame what the 18 to 35 was for APS-C, and it just never was. Um, it, it was never a, a popular still lens. It was definitely not a popular cine lens. So I have no doubt that any lens manufacturer that is in the cine realm is looking at and studying options for full frame zooms they've they've already jumped on it a ton um i would just hope that those manufacturers don't sacrifice image quality for price and we've kind of seen that shift with the chinese manufacturers and y you get what you pay for they're they're not the best but they're not bad so the the most common one i think of when someone asks for a sub 10k you know normal zoom range is the uh i just forgot what it's called oh man chai opt they have a 28 to 85 i believe very affordable but you're gonna get what you pay for it's not gonna be it's not gonna come even close to like the zeiss 28 to 80. DZO just released, I believe, new ultra-wide zooms. Yeah, they have the... It's a bit of a plug now, because <laughs> we were just talking about them. Um, the, they just lifted the embargo, so we were allowed to share all the details. 12 to 25, I believe. Now I have to look it up. And um, 18 to 35. The 18 to 35 is a, a mirrorless. Well, they make it in both mirrorless and non. It's the Kata and the Kata Ace. And then the uh, 12 to 25 is their Pictor line, which is Super 35 only. I'm going to pull it up here so I don't give wrong. Yeah, 12 to 25 T28.
yeah, that's that's gonna be a, a decent lens. That's gonna compete directly with like the 11 to 16. I mean, even that one millimeter makes a difference when you're that wide. Um, but it's hard to argue. So I would not be surprised. I, I can say this openly because I don't have any knowledge. I don't have any advanced knowledge. Um, there's nothing, I'm not breaking any embargoes or NDAs. Um, but I would not be surprised if DZO film sort of broke into that mid tier with a longer zoom range, full frame uh, cine zoom. So something like a 28 to 85 or, you know, that realm, full frame T29. That'd be great, but uh, nothing that I'm super aware of. Now I could try to phrase this question when it comes to individual lens element shapes. Is there such thing as a standardized set of shape dimensions? Or do companies all create unique shape dimensions? Um, I mean, there's there are standardized ways to describe certain shapes of lenses, like plano convex, plano concave, biconcave, biconvex, etc. Um, but that's really just describing the the very general shape of an element. What are your thoughts on the CZ 8528 versus 8514? Any difference in quality or image? I mean, personally, I would immediately go for the 8514 because that's just a dream. It's a fantastic lens with this, you know, 1.4. It's super shallow. Uh, but if you don't need that shallow depth of field or the extra light, then you're going to obviously save a lot of money going with the 2.8. He's looking for somebody to mentor and help the community, the Leica users. You're a talented technician. I could share his name directly to you. Um, I mean, I'm always helping the community. The whole lens tech training was pro bono. Uh, but the, the Leica community is a different breed <laughs> as far as like the still photo guys go. Is the 2.8 sharper than the 1.4? Yes and no. If you set the 1485 to 28, it's going to perform just as good, if not better. So if you compare them apples to apples, um, then then they're very similar. But if you do a lens test with the 8514 wide open at 14, no, it's not going to be as sharp as the 28 at 28. But that's not really a fair comparison. Is the CZ85 the same as the classic? I think you're referring to like the ZF2 and the ZE. It's pretty much the same optical design, but different different elements, different coatings. Um, it's not gonna give you an identical result. In fact, just off of memory, uh, I think the classic 85 is actually not going to perform as well as the the contacts 85. Is that why when a lens element in an old camera lens breaks, it's only possible to replace them? Yes, exactly. You can't, you can't swap out random elements. It doesn't work. Oh, I need a thread locker. Maybe we'll hunt for Zeiss Contacts Primes on a, on a mod stream. This one is always tricky 
because it's right up against that stop screw. I hate that. Um, I'd rather have the contacts with the class. Oh, absolutely. Same, same. I still gotta get the 60 macro. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, I mean, if, if money was not an object, um, I would pick Zeiss Contacts Primes over Classic Primes any day. But it's not just the cost of purchasing them. It's also, you know, maintenance. And if something goes wrong, you can't get parts or elements. So it's a, it's a huge consideration. Also, completely depends on what I'm shooting. If I needed something nice and clean, I would definitely go with the Melvis. If it was something something that I knew was destined for heavy VFX stuff, yeah, I would go with Melvis over the contacts. Pesky stop screw. By the way, thank you. Just got the Milvis twenty five and did the mod and had your video stream. Nice, nice. These companies that make lens replicas, they must be measuring the dimension of the elements looking for uh, The shape of the glass is just the tip of the iceberg. That's, you can, you can have the, you know, your radii flawless, but if, if you don't know the composition of the glass or the coatings, it's, it's not gonna work. Give me one second here. I'm gonna I have a ton of messages. I just wanna make sure I'm not missing something. Nothing critical. I think some of the staff here is watching this, so if they need to get a hold of me, they might be messaging me, but I don't think so. chat here. Love your work. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. I love my work, too. That's why I do it. That's why I have been doing it for 20-something years. So this aperture feels good, but it's not super consistent, and I don't know that there's much I can do about that. Um, there's a little bit of play. I don't know if you can hear that. You should be able to hear that now, but that play makes a huge difference in consistency. Ooh, 
Wish that 18 wasn't so slow. Yeah, I mean, that's the benefit of the Milvis with their revised 18. I used to I used to crap all over the the ZF2 because the 18 was a two oh no it was a three five and now with the uh, with the Milvis line it's back up to two eight which is awesome save all my baggies. Actually, we can use that for these screws. Come on out. There you go. Sometimes these aren't a perfect fit, but that one actually went on flawlessly. Fantastic. I just noticed how obvious my cat scratch is on camera. That's uh, that's me being uh, too playful with my cat. Whoa, and that is why we have the little lip. That screw would have gone straight off the bench In fact, I'm very, very excited. Uh, in about maybe two weeks, we should be getting our next batch of, well, not the next batch, a new batch of the first, so I'm saying that all wrong, the first batch of the uh, Mark II service mats. In fact, I should probably I should probably give one away on the stream once we get them in. Uh, Phil Holland did a live stream a couple weeks ago and talked about the love we have for vintage lenses especially the super ball tars he's got so many lenses i don't know he keeps me good <laughs> phil has a, a pretty good collection yeah to anyone who's thinking about doing their own lens modding get those mats they come in handy for sure yeah these are the original ones that we did during COVID, I think. I think we started shipping these back in like 2020. 
Um, and they're great, they still work. A lot of our technicians have them. Uh, but I wanted something a little bit bigger uh, and it had compartments. I wonder, I uh, shouldn't. I was thinking maybe I'll show you guys, but I don't want to ruin it, the, the surprise. I'll wait until we actually get one in and you see it on the bench. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with the, I feel silly calling a service mat a Mark II, but it's the second version, the V2, call it V2. Uh-oh. I think I just lost my stream. What's going on here? Probably gonna start buffering for everyone. <laughs> Too much traffic, probably. You're good. Okay, I guess it's working. Maybe it's just on my playback here. Did you watch any of the F1 car? I sure did. A uh, little, little nervous about Mercedes sticking to this the side pod concept. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I watched a bit about um, Mercedes basically saying they're super confident and everyone thinks that Mercedes is going to do great, but Mercedes then came out and said, hey, don't get too excited. We don't know what the Red Bull is doing yet. So we'll see. We'll see. I think I just need to refresh my... Uh, my playback here. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I'm super excited for this season. I think it's going to be amazing. I think if there was any question that Max was a, a world champion two years ago, that was squashed last year. Uh, but I do think he's he's lost a bit of that passion. I think he got I think he got a little fed up with all the the garbage around you know, the drama with them and Mercedes and the whole Netflix stuff. And so we'll see how that all pans out. Um, all right, it's almost noon. I think, I forgot how much time I allotted here. Um, I could probably start this other one. I might have to leave halfway through it though. I need to pick up my daughters, but I'll, uh, I'll give it a start. Let's check on the fish real quick here. Oh, that got wonky too. What's going on? Half of the, it's like cut off. That's weird. Let me try. It's gonna go black for a second. Don't worry. Don't worry. I just need to refresh that feed. There we go. That worked. I need to. Uh, I need a proper. I need a Fraser lens. So this guy 
right at the front, right on the top of the lens in the foreground is an auto syncless. They're basically a kind of an algae eater. And then there's a handful of mollies in there. See the black and white mollies in the back? Those were actually donated by uh, one of the, the staff members at Zero Optic. Not a whole lot of action going on there. Anyways, you're not here for fish. Let's go back to the mods. So this one is also getting full mod. Brianna, why are you worried, Brianna? Matthew, if you're willing to learn from Kwong Dang about camera optical repair, he may be able to teach you. Um, I'm not... I, I don't really have any aspirations to become a camera technician. Uh, I love lenses. <laughs> I don't get what you're worried about, Brianna. I'm always worried. About the fish? So if someone else was asking earlier what I look for. Um, so right away, the engravings are a little bit worn out. They're just kind of decolored. They're a little bit yellowed, which tells me it's been handled a lot. Not a bad thing. Um, there is a bit of wear on the mount surface. There's a bit of, uh, I don't know if you can see it. You can kind of see it there. Actually, here, I'll refocus. So this wear on the block right there, that's concerning. That means it was just bumped and you know taken on and off frequently. Not a huge deal, but it's just one of the things that I would look for. Uh, of course, no problem, insert name, but put in a real name next time so I know how to address you. Unless your name is insert name. <laughs> um, anyways, aside from that mount, the glass itself looks fantastic. It's not a single scratch, really nice, really clean inside and out. Um, so this lens is in very good condition. Very, very minor nicks in the anodizing around the edges, but overall very good. The focus is pretty good. The iris is a little bit spongy, but not bad. Is haze a product of age or miscare slash storage? Afraid to drop big bucks on a 3514. Um, haze can be a, a number of things, but usually it's miscare, yes. Um, it can be moisture contamination, it can be a separating doublet, um, all sorts of things. It can be grease that has outgassed and deposited a layer of haze. Is this the Hollywood? No, this is a 80, oh, it's a 35. The Hollywood is a 28. This is a 35 one four. Um, at this rate, maybe I'll make it through declicking, but I'll probably have to disappear. Johnny's always on it, the banner. Always helping me. I should just make you the uh, the moderator. 
There we go. Size context, I thought I could slip it through there, but that's not going to fit. So off comes the block. These are usually glued very, very well, excessively. Yeah, see, I can't even budget. Wow. Um. It might require a, a bit of persuasion. I missed this so much. The mod stream. I think I'm gonna switch it to Fridays during uh, during the day. That was enough to break it free. That one is really snug. There we go. I just acquired the 3514 in UK. Matt, how much are you currently going? Oh, I have no idea. I I try not to keep an eye on these prices because it's uh, it's terrifying how much they go up and down. lost my my monitor ah. Matt gotta say oh I skipped one here how are you gonna spend your Saturdays <laughs> uh, Saturdays are all time with my daughters pretty much In addition to learning a ton, your streams are a good break from everyday hectic. Yeah, yeah. Seventy-five to eight, seven eighty-five to eighteen hundred, depending on the condition. Yeah, that seems about right. How would you remove a tiny stripped screw? Well, it happens all the time. We get probably once a week. We get a set of lenses where the screws are stripped. Um, it depends on. Depends on how it's stripped, honestly. Um, if it's, uh, let's see if I can illustrate this. So this is one of the most common ones right here, actually. If if the 
well, you can't see it, it's so small, but <laughs> if the Phillips head is just rounded out, we have a couple tricks that we can use. If the head is gone, as in like it has fractured and severed off, uh, then we have to use a little bit more aggressive techniques, but uh, it really depends on the exact situation. What are your thoughts on storing lenses vertically versus horizontally? Is there any benefit to one over the other? Is it debate nonsense? I mean, if you're talking about storing lenses like, uh, you know, archivally for preservation, I would say lay them on their side. Um, if they're just in a shell on a shelf and you grab them, you know, regularly, it really shouldn't matter. Glad to see these back. What are your thoughts on storing? Oh, that's the one I just read. Sorry. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, are you going to bring doing this? Yes, I am going to do these more consistently, probably on Fridays instead of Saturdays. All right, so this one is pretty dried up. There's almost no lubrication in here, uh, so it probably hasn't been serviced in a long time. lost my bearing. Which wouldn't have been terrible. We're specifically taking the bearing out. I don't really need it. It's hard to find someone that service glass in my country. I have a couple of Olympus OMs with fungus. Would you say it's a simple job to do myself? I'm confident disassembling laptops. <sighs> laptops and lenses have almost nothing in common. Um, I mean, aside from the fact that they both have screws, but if you're confident in, you know, small part disassembly, I can't say go for it because that puts me in a, you know, legal liability. But, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so this, the, the grease on here is practically gone, and then the grease on here, it's there, but it's almost powdery. Uh, it's very dried up, so this will definitely feel much better once it's been properly cleaned and re-greased. see it that far away but there's a little bit of sand and dust and just stuff you don't want near the lens near the uh, internals of the lens is keeping lenses in a pelican case for a week or two at a time okay or do they need to be air, do, they need to, do they need airflow mm, they don't need airflow but I would definitely put desiccant in the case and change the desiccant out frequently. The problem with storing them in a case is if any moisture gets into the case, maybe your lenses have moisture on them and then you put them in, they're just going to sit in that moisture. So uh, leaving them in a Pelican case is fine as long as you're 100% sure there's no moisture in it. Otherwise you're just creating uh, a fungus trap.
you're gonna go for it. I mean, OM lenses aren't cheap these days. I, if you're, uh, if you don't have experience opening lenses and servicing lenses, I would not start with an OM. I would find some cheap lens on eBay that's broken uh, and get a feel for, you know, what to expect once you do dive into an OM lens. OMs are not the most straightforward when it comes to disassembly and reassembly. Uh, so yeah, I would highly recommend starting with something cheap, you know, a, a busted Russian Helios or something. Even Helios lenses aren't that cheap anymore. Do you think there are any aspects within the appeal of vintage lenses that have somewhat turned into perpetual hype? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's um, painfully apparent. You know, people love, the, the, the entire industry is clamoring for vintage lenses, which in most cases includes flaws like spherical aberration, chromatic aberration, flatness of feel, etc, etc. So then you get a lens set like, like I use DZO for example, the, uh, the Vespid Primes. And if someone buys a Vespid, a set of Vespid Primes, very affordable, very well built mechanically, but the optics aren't perfect and they have a little bit of chromatic aberration and a little bit of spherical aberration, some geometric distortion, and then all of a sudden it's, oh these lenses are no good. So there's definitely some hype around it and some, some, you know, misleading online opinions. Um, I have been saying it for uh, over a decade now, and I will continue to say it. There is no such thing as a bad lens. There's just different lenses for different purposes, different projects. I see your passion about optics. Kwong recoats and repolish my Leica lenses. Oh, good. He's in Garden Grove if you're willing to him, sit down with him. Uh, sit down with him for what? <laughs> To teach him? If he's already doing polishing and recoding, I don't know that there's much I could teach him. Or are you saying that so he could teach me? If you're if you're saying that so that he could teach me, then I mean we do all of our polishing as needed in house. So I uh, maybe he has more sophisticated machines than us. I don't know. Yeah, that's definitely buy a beater lens. If you if you don't have experience diving into lenses uh, and you want to try modding your own, definitely buy something cheap and disposable first. Um, don't don't go with like a uh, a Canon kit lens. Those are going to be completely different than something like this. So if you're interested in modding like R's, Zeiss contacts, FDs, anything like that. It's going to have very little in common with a modern photo lens. So try to find something older that has a full mechanical movement. All right, this is beautifully clean now. Uh, once I get this on here, am I going to struggle with my with my iris, I mean with my uh, focus gear. No, that fits right over, so I'll be fine.
that's gonna have to get realigned. I wouldn't touch my CY set, I'd surely strip the... Yeah, that's... I mean, anyone that's just starting out, don't start with CY, with Zeiss Contacts Primes. I can almost promise that you will strip the screws if you're just starting out. Um, they are notorious for stripping. So now I just need proper lubrication. Make sure I get the Duclos screwdriver set. It helps a lot with good. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a there's different purposes for different screwdrivers. These tips are not particularly hard. They're brittle, so that. If you get to a certain point that you may ruin your screwdriver, your um, your screw, you'd rather ruin the screwdriver tip and just replace the tip than ruin the screw itself. So they're specifically chosen so that they so the tips break before your screws break. But uh, the screws on the Zeiss contacts are they're so heavily glued. You got to be extremely careful, even with our driver set. Um, one critical, absolutely ground rule, ground, you know, lens service 101. It doesn't matter what screwdriver, it doesn't matter how good your screwdriver is, there's no substitute for technique. You could have the best quality screwdriver possible. Uh, and if you don't have good technique, you're still going to ruin your screws. So, practice. Uh, heating up the heads definitely helps, but even then, again, you have to know exactly where to heat up. Uh, it's not uncommon for the Zeiss contacts lenses to have plastic components around the mount. And if you go to heat up the screws and you melt the plastic components, you're in trouble. clean that up after. Actually, I'm going to clean it up now so it doesn't get stuck under the iris ring.
All right, that looks great. I should point the uh, the fish cam towards the lobby. So that fish tank is in our lobby. And on a Saturday, there's really nothing to see because nobody's here. Uh, but on a day like today, you guys could see all the foot traffic. <laughs> I don't know if there's any sort of rules about that, you know, showing somebody on a live stream without their permission. Oh wow, time flew by. Okay, I'm barely gonna get this back on before I have to pack up and get out of here. I hate the term, but that's buttery. It's that's the most overused term when describing cinema lenses, both optically and mechanically. Excellent. Okay, I'm probably gonna call it there because I do need to head out. Uh, Let's go through the last chats here. Thanks, I'd send it to do close. Yeah, I mean, we get a ton of lenses from the UK, but we get lenses for mods from all over the world. Um, so that would not be out of the ordinary. Enjoyed your last mod stream on Mimia Secors. I think that last one was my personal set. Do you have any experience with 70, the 70s, the 70s, the macro, I think. Is it not? The non-leaf shutter. None of my lenses have the leaf shutter. I don't have any of the, the S line. Um, I believe the 70 is the macro. In which case, it's it's a fine lens. It's not particularly nice, but it's not bad. Is this just a job or is this your therapy? No, this is my job. <laughs> this is my the the company that I do close lenses does. Uh, our, our primary business is lens repair and service, motion picture lens service. The the cine modding is a, sort of an entire division of the company. Uh, we have several technicians dedicated to just doing the modifications, um, but. The rest of our technicians, we have, uh, I think we have about 10 technicians currently. Um, about eight of them are dedicated to regular service work for, for cinema lenses, ingenue, cook, 
uh, Lights, Zeiss, you name it. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, my job these days is a variety of things. This I do this for the mod stream, uh, and I do enjoy it a lot. But if I'm being honest, I know that when I do the mod stream and I get to sit down and get my, my therapy in doing lens work, I just know that my inbox is stacking up. So <laughs> it is there is very therapeutic for me. So anyway, uh, yeah, thank you guys for, for tuning in. Uh, I didn't know if a Friday mod stream would work at all. So I will definitely be doing more Friday streams. So check back in and uh, see you next time. <laughs>